Welcome back to a Biostock studio here at Medicum Village in Lund, where I have been joined by Lipum and CEO Eina Pontén. Welcome, Eina. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, well, my name is Eina Pontén and uh, I'm the CEO of Lipum since four years. And uh, Lipum is a biopharmaceutical company focused on the chronic inflammatory diseases. Our lead candidate, Sol116, is a humanized monoclonal antibody that is rapidly moving towards clinical trials. And to make that possible, we have a very experienced team and we have in fact also still uh, the majority of shareholders are the founders of the company. And uh, right now we are currently evaluating the IPO opportunity for the further financing of LIPOM development. We work with chronic inflammatory diseases. Inflammation is a, is a natural process uh, in the healing. Uh, it is when, when this inflammation is lingering, when it becomes chronic, uh, when, when we start to have the adverse effect and the deterioration of for instance, uh, the joints. And inflammation affects millions, hundreds of millions of people globally. But more specifically, rheumatoid arthritis affects about 1% of the global population. And uh, the rare disease, juvenile adiopathic arthritis, that I will come back to a little bit later, uh, affects around about 600,000 uh, children and young people, teenagers. Despite the fact that we have had a tremendous uh, progress in development of treatment and new drugs, in particular biologicals for chronic inflammations, there is still a high unmet need. Beside adverse effects of the current treatment, <coughs> there is also a significant portion of the patients that, that are not helped. They are non-responders, around about 30% in fact. And this is where we see a business opportunity and we see a significant medical need. Our target molecule is a protein called bile salt stimulated lipase. And in, in this uh, right hand graph here you can see an uh, animal model on mice where the, we induce arthritis with collagen. And the wild type mice uh, are on uh, the, the, the open circles here. When they get the collagen, they get uh, the arthritis just as expected. But if we instead use the knockout mice, the, the genetically modified mice that don't have the B as a cell, they are in fact, un they are in fact not, not affected at all. And that is the, 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 the black squares. And a similar pattern is seen also when we study colitis. Here you have the colon and, and uh, the treated, when the animals are treated, the, the knockouts are in principle unaffected while the wild types are ser get a seriously damaged uh, colon. So this clearly indicates that, that there is an importance of BSSL in the development of the inflammation. Uh, and for that reason, we have developed Soul 116. And, and, and as I said, it's a, it's a humanized monoclonal antibody that should target BSSL and block the activity of the protein. This year, we have applied for patent for, for the Soul 116. That means that we will have protection for our, our innovation for the next 20 years. Previously, we already have granted patents for the treatment principle. They're granted in the US and, and, and Europe for rheumatoid arthritis and also for juvenile arthritis and pending for the IBD, the inflammatory bowel disease. What we will offer is an alternative mode of action. And it's described here by, by what our findings is that the BSSL molecule is released from neutrophils. 
And when it binds to monocytes, it stimulates monocytes to migrate to the site of inflammation and then differentiate and upregulate pro-inflammatory cytokines. But if we block the released BSSL, we don't get this migration of the monocytes and that should prohibit the development of the inflammation. <clears throat> now, we think this has a wide applicability. So at this point, we have, we have uh, uh, entered into a sort of late preclinical stage in looking into the arthritis and we're preparing for clinical trials in the beginning of 2022. But in parallel to that, we're also exploring other chronic inflammatory diseases and exemplified by those that we have listed here. A range of uh, in, uh, inflammatory diseases that has a high medical need and we have seen in ex vivo experiments in particular that we, there is a correlation between uh, the inflammation and an elevated level of the target protein BSSL. As, as I mentioned, we also see when we test on the genetic, genetically modified mice, the knockout mice, that there is an effect of BSSL, the knockouts are protected from developing the inflammation. And in the case of arthritis, we have tested in four different types of animal models and verified the importance of BSSL in development of inflammation and also the potential of blocking the BSSL molecule with an antibody. <coughs> These indications were selected because they range from autoinflammatory type to autoimmune type of inflammation. These diseases altogether constitute a huge market, global market. And of course, LIPM cannot address all of them. But more specifically, we have seen that in the juvenile idiopathic arthritis, we identify an opportunity of 1.2 billion euro. And for the rheumatoid arthritis, we see an opportunity for 4 billion euro, 4 million, 4 billion euro, sorry. And of course, to exploit this, we need to have competent industry people on board. But we have also the entrepreneurs. Uh, two of us have made exit previously. Uh, in the same time, we have those that have gone through things like uh, CMC, TOX, regulatory, and IP, of course. And for the board and scientific advisory board, there is a range of <coughs> scientific experience and practice. So these, some of these are doctors, in particular with experience from children, and they have seen the, the medical need among children affected by juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So now, uh, this year we can conclude that we have applied for patent that give us exclusivity for the next 20 years. Norlands Fonden have invested in Lipum. We just recently produced uh, 200 liter of our antibodies, Sol 116, at Absena, that is our partner in, in San Diego. And we have, in principle, a production me method by that. And we have also initiated collaboration with Örebro University, and that is related to IL-1 research. Uh, it's research on plaque and heart attack, stroke, and to some extent also cancer. And just this week we start another study together with our partner Immunid in Uppsala to get more details and more insights in the mode of action. If we now look ahead, yeah, first of all we are looking into the IPO uh, opportunity because we need to finance next year's activities and uh, we start the TOC study of Sol 116 now in December uh, together with our partner Charles River. And in April we continue to GMP manufacturing of the Sol 116, which means that we will have plenty of time for fill and finish and, 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 a, and a preparation ready to start clinical phase one study 
during the first quarter of 2022. And um, the first, the phase one study is planned that we first have a, a phase 1A on healthy volunteers and the phase 1B will be on adult RA patients. And the intention is of course then that we will also look for clinical verification by, by monitoring uh, pro-inflammatory biomarkers and the DAS28 uh, score that is used to di for the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, I think I fin I'm finished there, so I thank you for your attention and we look into the questions. Yeah, I'm ready for some questions. I actually wanted to start with the patient perspective. So if you look at these uh, children and young people who have juvenile idiopathic arthritis, what would it mean for them to have a treatment like yours available? Yeah, that, that would make a change, of course, uh, uh, especially for those that are non-responders to the current biologics, because in the treatment tree, uh, first of all, they get uh, small uh, chemical molecules like methotrexate, and the next instance is typically then an anti-TNF uh, antibody. But since uh, several of them, uh, around about 30% are non-responders, there is a need for an alternative mode of action. And that's where we see an opportunity that, that our antibody could meet an, an unmet need. And if we look a bit, you talked about the finances a bit here. You are supported by the European Union's Horizon program. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, we received, actually it's two, we started the project two years ago. So we received 2.2 million euro. Uh, and uh, it has been for 24 months, and, and that was also followed up by private investments of around about 2.4 million euro. So we have been very well financed so far. Mm. Yes, because you also did a, a share issue right of 10 million this summer. So yeah, we so did. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was when this pandemic breakout was in, in, in February, we, we immediately decided to change a little bit in the plan, reduce our capital need, and we made a smaller uh, share issue uh, and altogether, it was 10 million sec. Yeah, because like you said there, you were quite quick to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic and change your plans for the year. Would you say you've been successful in uh, yeah, reacting that, to the uh, new normal? Yeah, that was a, that was a, a smart move because we did, I mean, nobody know how, what would happen and, and, and we were not in a rush. Of course, it would have been much more complicated if you already started clinical trials, for instance. So. Now we know that we can, now we have had the time to develop everything and prepare. Now we're really ready to push the button. So with the TOC study starting now, we will have all the data we need to start clinical trials in the first quarter 2022. So if we look ahead a bit, where do you see LIPAM at the end of next year, at the end of 2021? Yeah, well, then, the, then we're just about to start the clinical okay. studies because we, we, we uh, uh, the TOX program, and, and this is something that is often forgotten, and that is that the costs for development of a, a monoclonal antibody and the cost for passing TOX studies are much higher compared to a small molecule. But the benefit is that the success rate is normally twice as high uh, uh, so those uh, candidates that reach clinical phase, you have twice as high chance to, to reach the market if you have a, a monoclonal antibody. Mm. Well, thank you, Aina, for coming and, and telling us about your company. Thanks a lot. Mm.